Got Bellator 258s in the books, and you have a new Bantamweight champion. What did you think of Sergio Pettis' performance tonight? You know what? I think that uh, he did a great job. Juan is a tough fighter. He's a guy that brings a lot of pressure, and I think he was a really effective counterpuncher. And a lot of times he'll beat him to the punch. So, you know, I think he had a good strategy, and um, Juan seemed like he had a hard time holding him down, keeping him down, and he couldn't grind him out and became uh, a striking contest. And and Sergio, uh, you know, was more effective in striking. After the fight, Sergio called for Kyoji Horiguchi. Uh, do you think that that's a possibility that you and Ryzen can get together and, and do another uh, cross-promotion fight like that? You know, I think the only reason why we're not working together right now is because of COVID, to be honest. So, you know, once that situation kind of, you know, goes away or there's, I, I definitely see light at the end of the tunnel. And um, uh, then we'll start working together at some point, I'm sure. Um, and we'll check in from time to time with uh, Isaki Ibarra and, and see where he's at. But, um, you know, we'd love to have Horiguchi come and fight Pettis at some point. Michael Venom Page opened the main card with quite a performance. Uh, I mean, how impressed were you? And, and where do you think that, uh, what kind of opportunity do you think he earned himself tonight? I mean, Michael, I mean, I, I, he's one of my favorite fighters I've ever promoted. And the guy is so talented. He does things that not too many people can do. And uh, especially in mixed martial arts, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's just a different kind of sport than traditional karate, but he's using traditional karate techniques that, that are working very effective in MMA. So to me, it's, it's, it's really, really, for me, fun to watch somebody that, that, that kind of skill really, uh, you know, put it, put it together and, and make it happen in the cage. So, you know, who he fights next? I mean, I mean, I think he's right up there. I mean, I think he's ranked number two now in the, in the contention. So, you know, we have Lima fighting in, in the fight coming up on June 11th on Showtime. After that, you know, we'll, 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 we'll talk to Michael and see, you know, what's going on. But to me, he's right up there in the title contention, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, Rumble Johnson came back, first fight in over four years, gets the knockout win in the second round. But he said in terms of fights, win or lose, this was the most disappointing night of his career. What, do, what are your thoughts on his performance and the fact that he feels like he let everybody down in a way? Oh, I, I don't feel like that at all. Listen, this guy has been out for four years. And you know what? I was just telling somebody else this story. You know, I held another tournament back in, in 2011. And there's a kid named Daniel Cormier that was the alternate that came out of nowhere and just started beating everybody up. And you know what? Jose was, he was that guy. He was a guy that's very dangerous that can strike. He's on a five fight win streak, I believe, or four fight win streak. And when you're, when you're training for an opponent, like rumble has been training for Romero, then all of a sudden it's a curveball for him too. It's not, it's, it's really, you know, I think unfair to judge him just based on this, this fight, because he's been training for Romero, who is primarily a wrestler and grinder. And, and so now we throw a completely different opponent there. And, you know, he got caught. Listen, everybody gets caught in this sport. It's, it's, it's going to happen. But at the end of the day, he did what he had to do. He overcame the obstacle. He won in tremendous fashion. I think it was, you know, one of the, one of the biggest knockouts I've seen here in a while. And, you know, now he moves forward to fight Nemkov. So uh, there's been a lot of great action for him uh, ahead. And um, I don't think he should be disappointed at all. I think, I think you know, the fighters sometimes are their worst critic. And, and I, I think he's, when he watches the tape, you know, he'll see he got caught. It happens. But, you know, he overcame. So that's the most important thing uh, in the victory. The fight between Peter Queeley and mm -hmm. Patricky Pipple lived up to the hype. Those two guys went mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. Ended kind of in a controversial way with the cut. What, what did you think of the stoppage of the fight? Well, I'll tell you, um, as a fan, you know, you, you hate to see fights get stopped. But, you know, he was cut you know, in a bad way and in two places. And he was just, they couldn't stop the bleeding. So, you know, I thought, I think it was the right decision by the doctors to stop that uh, fight. Um, but to me, I, I was telling the coaches and, and his brother, Hey, we can put the rematch together at some point. You know, I know Peter wants to fight, you know, for the title uh, against Fabricio, but uh, Fabricio is going to be busy with, with AJ here coming up. Uh, we'll have a date to announce, you know, in the next week or so. Um, but we're going to put that fight together and, and, you know, after that, who knows, but in the meantime, I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch of that fight, to be honest, because I think, honestly, uh, I think that, uh, Pitbull was maybe a little bit ahead on the scorecards, uh, you know, until the fight ended. And then last thing for me, I think the most popular guy on this card was the guy that was supposed to fight on this card, but then didn't end up fighting. Mm -hmm. Everybody called out James Gallagher tonight. It was oh. like four or five different guys. 
Mm-hmm. Rafion starts, Johnny Campbell after his upset win, and then Patchy makes it a lot to say yep. amongst others. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Is there kind of a front runner in your eyes on the James Gallagher sweepstakes? I mean, I think it depends on when he's ready to fight again. And, uh, you know, these other guys are going to stay busy. And, you know, people love to fight James and, and he loves to talk about it as much as he can. So we'll, we'll have a great promotion when it happens, no matter who he fights. But, you know, depending on when his injury heals and he's ready to come back, that'll determine who he fights uh, at that time. Scott, uh, MVP with a huge win tonight against a ranked opponent. Do you think this finally ends the, the silly narrative that, you know, MVP only fights trash cans? That I never understood. You know, people give a bad time online and I'm thinking to myself, this guy is such a highly skilled mixed martial arts athlete and, and has a traditional karate background, which you saw today, right? And it's very effective. And, you know, people give him a bad time. And I, and I never understood it because, you know, he's fought, you know, some of the world's best. He fought Douglas Lima as a title holder, you know, to, uh, in the, I think it was the semifinals to, uh, uh, in Chicago, I believe. And, yeah, he got caught. But Douglas Lima told me, he said, Coker, that guy got, I mean, he hit me and he hurt me. He's one of the few guys that, is, that Douglas has told me that he's, that he's gotten hurt by the opponent. So to me, the guy is explosive. He's fast. He's got a lot of power. He can knock people out. He's a dangerous guy for anybody because his style is so unorthodox. It's, it's going to be uh, interesting for any, any athlete to try to overcome that because, you know, if you're a wrestler, you try to take him down. He might, you might end up with a knee in your face. Right. And he's fast and, you know, I, 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 I think that he, when he fights, you know, I think he deserves a title shot. So let's see what happens with the Lima fight, but um, depending on what happens uh, and when, when MVP wants to fight again, yeah, I don't, I don't think a title shot is out of the question to be honest. And Bellator just announced an interim heavyweight title fight. Mm-hmm. Um, could we also see that for the lightweight division in the future? You know, the reason why um, we did the heavyweight intern was, and we don't traditionally do those. We, we have never done it in the history of the, you know, of the company is because it's been such a long time, you know, that this title has been sitting out there and Bader is actively in our tournament with an ending that might be, you know, end of the year. So we didn't want to ha- have it sitting out there, you know, longer than we, than we need to. So for the heavyweight championship, we felt good because, you know, these guys could fight, when Bader fights, if he keeps winning, he fights at the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year, he could fight the champ that wins the interim. But for the 155, Patricio is, is pretty much going to be done with this featherweight tournament in, uh, let's say, mid-July or, you know, in, in that time frame. So you, you have a couple months uh, to wait. And then after that, he can go defend his lightweight belt. So you can see uh, Fabricio fighting for the lightweight belt probably, you know, I would say September, October. So I, I feel like that's why we, we, we don't need to do the lightweight belt for interim. All right, we'll take a couple more here. Giancarlo. Hi, Scott. Uh, tonight was a great showcase for your band and weight division. Uh, can you just talk about the quality of that division? And is this, as more fighters come out of this, is there, are they making a case for themselves to be the next Grand Prix that you guys go with? You know, the Grand Prix hasn't been determined. Uh, but what I will say is, if you look at the quality of fighters in this division it's stacked and i think of fighters like magomed magomedov i think about the two gentlemen that just fought tonight i think about horiguchi coming in and when you start stacking this division and all the all young talent that we have coming up it's, it's going to be you know a formidable division and whether it's our tournament or not that's been undetermined we're focusing on the light heavyweight uh tournament uh right now and then we'll decide what we do maybe you know come september darren Scott, as weird as it is to say, we're almost halfway through the year, and most companies within the sports world have had to scale back over the last year or two. Bell Tour is continuing to grow, so I'm wondering if you have an accomplishment that you're most proud of so far as we're almost halfway into 2021. You know, I'll tell you, this is, um, you know, something there have been a lot of challenges, a lot of adversity in, in keeping this company going in, in, the, in the COVID world. And uh, as you guys can see here, we're still in the bubble, a lot of restrictions. You know, my staff's been here almost for a month, uh, putting these fights on together. Uh, and so it's, it's a challenge, but you know, when I think about the victories, this is the greatest roster in the history of Bellator. And it's taken about five, five and a half, six years to put this roster together. If you think about our new television deal with Showtime, uh, I think that's a great opportunity. You have, you know, the best, it's the best combat deal uh, in sports because you have 22 boxing fights a year. You have 22 MMA fights a year. You know, you get 44 fights of combat sports 
on Showtime, and it's just part of the package. So to me, the new relationship with Showtime has been a game changer for us. And uh, I think that they've done such a great job helping us grow this brand. And when I think about the roster and getting the fighters like AJ McKee or, you know, other fighters that we're developing from ground zero to the point where they can now fight in the big fights here in this company is very important because, you know, we said before, you, you, we, we, you can buy free agents from the top down, which we will and we have, but you also have to build from the ground up. And that's what we've been very successful in doing. Dylan? Hey there, Scott. I was just curious because there had been prior media appearances where you were saying that you're expecting to have an opponent solidified for Fedor, Emelianenko, and even could coincide with the Bellator 258 show that went down tonight there. Do you have any updates or specifics on the next opponent for Fedor? Yes, unfortunately, we don't have anything to announce uh, today. We're still working through some things on location. It's been a little bit challenging, but he will fight sometime in the fall. Uh, and, um, you know, I think that he'll be here for Moldowski to fight uh, Johnson. So um, hopefully we'll have something to announce uh, at that time. One or two more. Santiago. Hi, Scott. Greetings from Amsterdam and congratulations on a beautiful night of fights. Is a middleweight title fight between champion Gegard Musasi and Joel Romero something you would entertain in the future? And do you think that would be the biggest middleweight title fight of all time in Bellator with two massive stars? I think that would be a fun fight to watch. Uh, I'm not sure if Romero uh, can make to uh, 185 right now, but, um, you know, who knows? In the future, uh, maybe that fight can happen. Right now, it's not It's not on the books. We have to, uh, you know, I think you all, you all has to get a couple of fights, a couple of wins. If he can get a couple of wins, then maybe he can fight Gegard. But uh, as far as, as a fan, yeah, I, I would love to see that fight. That would, be, that would be amazing. Maria? Hi, Scott. Wonderful event this evening. With the performance of both of the fighters in the main event and the fact that the Bantamweight division is just stacked with killers right now, do you anticipate or can you speak to the idea of whether or not you would see Sergio's first title defense being a rematch against Archuleta or would he be more, more than likely competing against one of the other guys in the top of the division? You know, that's something that uh, I'd like to go back and talk to the fight team, which I will. And, uh, you know, and then once we figure out, take a look at um, the opponents and maybe who is going to be ranked number two or three. And then we can circle back. But right now, we're just not ready to make that commitment. You know, I want Sergio to enjoy his win. Personally, a rematch would be great. Fight against Magomed Magomedov would be great, too. Uh, Hog fight with Horguchi would be great. There's, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of options for this, uh, for Sergio to defend. But, um, you know, if you're asking me tonight, it's really uh, uncertain. And uh, we'll have some more clarity maybe in the next week or so. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thank Appreciate you. it.